um, and this is me fishing this is my first fishing video I'm hoping to do a few more in the future um, I apologize for the sound uh, quality it isn't the best it will get better um, this is me fishing as you've seen from the uh, text that came up at Sedges which is in the deepest Somerset um, this is a 20 peg match uh, the lake is only 20 pegs so it is sort of a set light um, it's winter time it's bright it's flat it's fishing very difficult um, but enjoyable very fair match as well I don't mind where I draw on this lake really to be honest although um, on the day it did turn out there was quite a ball fish in one area um, it sort of romped the match to be honest I don't think uh, the chap who won it will mind me saying that he's a good angler mind it it was a good weight on the day he had as well um, I'm on peg 22 as you've seen and uh, I've fed a line at 13 meters there slightly to the left with a very small amount of ground bait sort of a one-handed squeeze ball to start with um, with a few dead pinkies in it and um, I'm just sort of fishing pinkies maggots etc over that and then slightly to the right I've been cab potting in small amounts of micro pellets um, they do like micros down here uh, it's about six and a half foot deep and it's a silvers match everybody's trying to catch the best way of silvers they can I didn't really hear of anybody um, hooking a lot of carp to be honest they're pretty inactive I think they're a little bit further out um, especially sort of early in the, earlier in the match the first two and a half two and three quarter hours I fished between the pole line there um, I had a quick look on the pellet start I should say that because if you are on fish here you can catch on that pellet quite early it didn't actually happen for me on the day uh, but I did have a quick look on it always start on it um, but it didn't happen so I've, I've then flitted between fishing over the grain bait and a very small feeder um, about three quarters of the way out towards the island there I, I didn't go um, silly length I didn't go into carp territory and also I always think um, if you catch a few on that you, you want a little bit of room to to go uh, further when they back off but um, it didn't really happen I've had two hand sized skimmers on the feeder which is nice or sort of six ounces a piece I suppose um, and I've had a few sort of two ounce dumpy roach on single pinky over the grain bait um, it's it, it's very hard that hasn't really worried me too much because I do know sedges um, I lo know me local circuit fairly well and I do know that you can start off very slow here you don't need very long on on, on the decent fish to sort of nip your section or nip into the frame um, which is always nice so it hasn't worried me too much that it's been a slow start Plus on here, I mean, there is islands around, so you can't see everybody, as you can see. But I can see opposite and see them left and right, and, and no one's, from what I can see, is really running away with it. Um, so as you've seen, I just put on a half butt now, and I'm fishing a double fluoro pinky just past me grain bait now, just seeing if there's some fish, just a bit, little bit reluctant to come right over the bait, but sort of just hankering off the back of it we sort of fish off off the left of it the right of it the back of it um, can catch fish on top of it as well of course but I'm just it, it's the water's quite clear and I'm just trying to tick over really in these in this period of the match really just trying to sort of keep putting something something in the net so just lowering the rig in again sometimes where the water's that little bit clearer night they like to see the bait dropping through the water you know and uh, sometimes they can be off the bottom of course and they'll follow that down they follow it down watch it almost settle and pick it up not fishing a heavy rig fishing a sort of I think it was a point four um pencil style float because as you can see it there's no there's no real toe on the water um there's a slight bit of movement which is left to right but it's minuscule really and there we go we've just hooked one right off the back of the feed there i 
Now, as you've seen at the start of the video, we just caught our first decent skimmer then. And now we're into another one. No rush with these fish. The last thing you want is for a fish to come off. Not only do you lose the fish if it comes off, but um, it, it, it sort of grates you, doesn't it? It, it does me. If I lose a fish, I, I, I sort of feel, oh, you know, that, that, that would... Um, I wouldn't be over happy then for the next five minutes, so it, it can affect your temperament. And uh, you don't want to do that, so just nice and steady. I'm fishing quite light, um, probably lighter than some people do, but it's what works for me. I think, I think you have to fish how you feel comfortable. What makes you feel confident? And that's what what fishing's all about, really. Uh, certainly, match fishing. If you're not sat there feeling confident in what you're doing, you're not going to win nothing. So you've got to sit there and just be confident on what what you 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 like doing. And so I'm fishing 08 bottom, which isn't particularly heavy, isn't particularly light for silvers, is about right. But I am fishing a 22 hook. Um, I started a bit bigger, but um, maggot and things wasn't happening. Um, I started catching the odd fish on pinkies. Um, there's no way my four mil expanders are going to work over the pellet either. I don't feel like it is. Um, so I'm, I've now gone down to sort of um, a three mil expander. Not gone on that line yet, but but that's what I'm sort of thinking. I'm watching around all the time, as I say, seeing who's catching what. And there there isn't really much happening. Right to 13 meters then cab potted in then a, a few pinkies and then just went that dolly but past so it's another half a meter just past the, the feed there and just letting the rig settle and, and get straight before we let it down in there we go lovely day cold but beautiful really really bright day as you can see um, yeah just gorgeous fish a lot of matches down here in the sort of little southwest circuit down here we've got a good bunch of blokes fish against week in week out lots of interesting waters um, should be able to video a lot of them from um, bagging carp waters to, to some really nice um, silverfish waters been fishing the sort of commercial circuit now for about seven years um, I used to team fish uh, a lot of people my age sort of uh, 50s late 50s as I am now um, started back in the day in sort of team fishing um, what well, club fishing really first of all and then your, your club generally put a team into the winter league and you you hope to get in that and, and started fishing team matches and, and matches like that um, and then you sort of progress from there really we didn't have all the sort of magazines and videos and so on you have nowadays I mean I think I fished my first match um, and it was I was quite late really I, I fished my first match I think when I was around 28 um, and then uh, I moved teams um, I started at a, a club level um, called Glaston Manor and then I went to Weston and then from there I think I went to Sharp Match Group which was based on Clard and a lovely bunch of lads used to fish down at Porth Reservoir and things in the Super League as well um, and then from there I went to Thatcher's Match Group um, and then Tobber and Tobber became Blackmore Vale uh, which was a, a good team in the South West to be honest um, I think we got into the Winter League final five times in six years which 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 was good for for you know nice local bunch of lads get together enjoy our fishing i thought we'd done well and then there's um silly bait as well which uh, I, I almost forgot then um friend of mine uh, brought that out oh many years ago um back when i started 
the match fishing really he um he was always messing about trying to make baits etc and um in the end he came out with uh well with silly bait and that was obviously one of the probably well probably the first um fish mill based ground bait on the market um and he did very well so it was nice to be able to fish with that in its very early stages before it was even in the shops or anything else uh yeah we certainly got had some good results with that So we've just caught another one now, uh, right over the feed there. Just a small fish. As I say, it's just a case of ticking over really. Um, it's fishing very hard, it's very bright, very very flat. And they all count. They all add up to the weight at the end, so. The nets, um, that landing net may look quite large uh, it's because sedges provide all the nets the landing nets and the keep nets and everything um, this way he, he he ensures the sort of safety of his fish and things so I can fully understand that and it's a it, it's, a, it's a fair playing field um, you know, everybody's using the same net so it's yeah, of no difference really But Sedges itself has um, now opened up a nice new little building um, for breakfasts. Very nice breakfast it is as well. Um, do enjoy a breakfast and a bit of a social before the match. And uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's got three lakes on the complex. I think it's probably around, I'm not entirely sure, but it's probably around 60 pegs in the fishery itself. So we're going out now and we're going to look on the pellet line um, first time now drop a few micros in not many 20 30 micros maximum and then we've just gone past it Let's see if there's any fish there lying behind where we have been dripping in feed i've been dripping in feed as i say i did start on the pellet but only gave it sort of 10 minutes is all you need you shouldn't know um, it didn't happen so um, i spent then the first sort of two and three quarter hours uh, fishing the tip and um, over the ground bait and um, just picking up odd fish there we are in our first one just off the back of those pellets I've dampened down my micros correctly so they're, f they're fully damped because it's cold time of year and I want to fully damp but I do want a nice micro when it sort of keeps its shape doesn't go to mush but when you put those pellets together that expander with those micros they look very very similar and really that's what you're after is is bait looking perfectly natural to what you're feeding So now we know we've we've caught our first fish on pellet. We we know there's a chance of a few fish on pellet now. It's getting late in the match. Um, it's fishing very hard. So now I'm thinking, well, let's feed a little bit back on that grain bait line because we know we're going to go back on the pellet now for a little bit. Um, if I fed ground bait on that ground bait line before going on the pellet and then didn't catch on the pellet and had to go back on the ground bait line, I could be waiting 10 15 minutes to catch even any small fish with fishing that hard. So we know we've caught one on the pellet, so it's time to feed that ground bait line. Not much, you'll see by the size, I mean, really not much at all, you know, a walnut size, really. So again just at 30 meters not feeding it past the feed we fish past the feed but we don't want to start feeding past it
caught one straight away there look didn't refeed it just dropped in where we fed and, and caught off the back of it that last fish so we caught off the back we didn't line any fish or anything like that uh, from where we fed but then we've fed the ground bait line and then we've gone back over where those few micros just like 20 30 micros have gone in dropped right on it and that one straight away look so they were definitely up for those having those few micros but as I said it's about six and a half foot deep um, using a point four as I was saying um, and it's it, it is silty like any fishery really but it isn't overly silty um, it's not really really soft um, with loads of silt but there is some silt so that's another reason to just sort of feed it quite lightly as well really um, ground bait wise I'd always just sort of one hand squeeze it um, so as it breaks up just in that last 18 inches of water as it goes down um, we're on a day like today obviously you could, you could feed it loose no doubt about it now putting a few fish together now still looking around no one's really from what I can see is catching just really using this line to give that pellet line a bit of a break lifting and dropping it again actually moving it now like moving it around the peg these fish are cold moving main loads and just dropping it in just slightly to the right of the feed now still behind the feed but to the right Skimmer. Again, they all count. Love catching fish. So, time to have a look on that pellet line again.
dropping it in right over the bait this time at 30 meters as you can see the dolly boat is still behind the elbow at the moment so letting the rig straighten up no boat straight away so feed a few pellets we're not too worried about the pellets dropping down over our rig and our our hook bait already being on the bottom rather than going down with the pellets because we've been experimenting with that throughout the day and there hasn't been a case of liners at all it's not like they're up in the water intercepting the bait or anything you can see now I've put those pellets in there's no liners or anything Those pellets have hit bottom about now. I'm fairly confident we're going to get another one on this. I mean, we had them other fish on it. They, they certainly seem to come to those few pellets now, regularly being put in there. lift and drop again just to check that pellet didn't sat awkwardly or just to catch the eye of a fish and there we go got a nice skimmer Fishing quite a lot of elastic. I do like light elastics. Um, there's there's nowhere for these fish to sort of you know run off and and and, and uh, snag you up or anything like that. Especially if somewhere like sedges is sort of big open water really. Um, to say plenty of depth there. So I'm using a four elastic through me um, number three and number two of my match kits. I don't use the number one, same as a lot of people. Plus you've got your puller bone part of the way up the number three as well course which reduces the elastic again I do make, tend to make the elastics when I'm on threes and fours quite um, pingy thanks for watching everybody